Hi, my name is Daryl Peterson, and I'm the manager of the Applications Engineering Department here at MicroMeasurements. I want to take a few minutes and discuss another topic with you related to shunt calibration. And this is another common question we get in the Applications Engineering Department, which is, can I shunt calibrate the active strain gauge at the instrument? In one of the previous uh, videos, we talked about shunt calibrating the active gauge, and certainly you can do that. One of the big drawbacks, though, is that this can be very inconvenient. You know, think about your application where you might have 72 strain gauges installed on a structure, then that structure may be 50 feet off the ground, and that means you have to climb around that structure, take a resistor out of your pocket, connect it right across the active gauge. So you can see that's not very convenient. So some customers will want to, to provide that calibration, but do it back over at the instrument. And I want to take a few minutes and talk about whether or not that's a good idea. So to get started, I'm going to draw a Wheatstone bridge, and I'll draw the corners of the bridge. So we've got our resistors here, we've got another resistor. This will be a quarter Wheatstone bridge, so that means we're going to have one active strain gauge. There's a good picture of it. Let's go ahead and assume this strain gauge is 120 ohms. And it's going to be a three-wire system. So I got one lead connecting to that location. I've got another lead that's going to be a, a signal output. And then I've got a third wire that's going to connect down to this location. Now, <clears throat> if this one's 120, if that strain gauge is 120, this resistor has to be 120. And let's just assume that these are all 120 ohms. They don't have to be, but the internal half bridge could be 120, 350, or 1,000, and since they're on the other side of the bridge from the gauge in this dummy resistor, you know, they could be any one of those values, but we'll just assume for now they're 120. And we'll draw the excitation. If we go around and label the corners of the bridge, I've got P plus, P minus for the power that's coming in. I've got S plus, and I've got S minus, which technically is at that location, really on the tab of the gauge, because we've got that third wire again connected right there on the tab. So when we talk about, can I shunt calibrate the active gauge at the instrument, what we're talking about is connecting a resistor in parallel across the strain gauge, which, like I mentioned, is not a very convenient location out at the gauge. But, <clears throat> Imagine doing this back over here at the instrument where it's much more convenient. Now you've got your data acquisition. You know, can you shunt calibrate this strain gauge back over at that location? And one of the most obvious spots to do that is right here. So if I take a resistor and I connect it at this location, this resistor is going to connect from a power lead to a signal lead. So this is my signal output connection, one of them. There's the other one. This is my power, P plus, P minus is power, S plus and S minus, that signal out. So if I connect this resistor in place, let's make a couple of notes. First thing that you should find is that since we're shunt calibrating the active gauge causing that resistance to go down, it's going to simulate compression. However, there's an issue, and the issue is this. In the, in the amount of magnitude of this problem is going to be a function of what the resistor value is of your strain gauge, or that strain gauge resistance value, as well as what the calibration resistor is. Commonly, we like to use uh, 59,880 ohms because that will produce a thousand microstrain simulation at a gauge factor equal to 2.0, assuming that you've got a 120 ohm strain gauge. So this resistor would be 59,880 ohms. So if I connect it at this spot, one of the things you've got to realize is that you start drawing a current through that resistor 
and you drop it onto this signal wire. And is that a good idea? The answer is no. Because normally the signal wires are fed into high impedance devices and there really is no current flowing on the signal wire until you drop this resistor in place. And when you do that, that will create an error. This error magnitude is going to be a function of, again, the resistance of the strain gauge plus the resistance of this resistor and the wire resistance as well. And that current, if you think about it, you have a switch where you're dropping it in place. You put the resistor, you put a switch, you close it, and now it's only present during the calibration. It's not there while your, your strain gauge is active and you're trying to make measurements. So it creates a change that's only present during the calibration, not present during the active measurements, and that current draw on this signal lead is a problem. So we would say, can you shut calibrate the active strain gauge? Well, at this location, we would say no. No connection to signal leads. We don't like that. Well, if you're looking at this and you're noticing, you say, well, what about this location? Can I calibrate between P plus and here? And the answer is, well, let's take a look at it. So I'm going to erase this. So now we're going to connect from P plus, calibration resistor, put the switch in, We'll jump over that wire we're going to connect it to here. And again, still with a 59,880 ohm resistor. You're still back over effectively at the instrument, not out at the gauge side. We connect P plus through the resistor. Now we're connecting over to a corner. So now we don't have to worry about drawing a current onto that signal wire, right? So now we look at it and say, well, maybe we could calibrate at this location. Is it a good idea? Well, there's a problem. The problem is this. It's the resistance of these wires. Why is that a problem? Well, the resistance of the wires can vary depending on the length of the wires. And when you take this resistor and you shunt calibrate across these two points, you're not pulling in just the, the resistance of the gauge that you're shunting, but you're also shunting the resistance of these wires. And depending on what that value is, that will throw off your calibration. If you remember from the previous videos, one of the things we like to do is shunt calibrate across a very precise resistor. And in general, your lead wires are not going to be anywhere near as precise as these 0.01% bridge completion resistors. So if you knew the resistor values of Arcibel and you took that into account when you're calculating this parallel resistance, then maybe you can calibrate the strain gauge, the active strain gauge back over at the instrument. But in general, it's a bad idea. And the reason it's a bad idea is the variability in the resistance of these two wires. Because now you're not calibrating across 120, you're calibrating across 120 ohms plus whatever 2 times R sub L is. And this will vary greatly depending on your application. So to go back to the original question, can I shunt calibrate the active strain gauge at the instrument? For most applications and customers I would say no. There are better places to calibrate don't do it there. If you'd like to find out more about shunt calibration, please visit our website at www.micro-measurements.com. Thank you.